So welcome to the measuring IBFS truck. Uh, I am Yanis. Uh, I lead the probe lab effort in PL Endress, which is um, composed of a few people within PL, but also uh, a very exciting and vibrant community of outside collaborators, which is um, great to have work with us. Um, yeah, so I'm going uh, in this kind of first presentation of the day, I'm going to basically give an overview of what we're doing and things that we've done in the recent past, the last couple of quarters. Uh, and then for many of the things that I'm going to mention in one slide, there is a whole presentation afterwards. So that's why I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, but of course, we can discuss it in the, in the Q&A anyway. Uh, and in the end, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to introduce the rest of the speakers and uh, do some logistics talking. So um, as I mentioned earlier in the opening, um, in the opening session earlier today, uh, what ProBlob is, is basically data-driven protocol design and optimization. That's the effort uh, we have ongoing and that's what we're striving to do, um, which is kind of another way of saying that we are collecting and analyzing protocol data from several components that make the IPFS network. Right, so there isn't one content routing system, there isn't one protocol, there are many. And what we're trying to do is go and look into the details of all of them. Um, yeah, again, things might be working. Um, in many occasions, we figured out that things are not working the way you expect them to work or the way that you want them to work. So um, that's why tools to analyze performance and look into data is so important. Now, the end goal, of course, is not measuring um, networks and protocols just for the sake, but basically um, it's only a means to an end, which is to identify the bottlenecks, figure out which things are not working as you expect them to work, and um, design protocol optimizations. That's why you know, our team is basically not only doing the measurements, which is the, the kind of main first step, but also we are uh, proceeding to, to uh, propose optimizations for what we've seen. So the kind of workflow works, works like that. Uh, we might have a research hypothesis, which you know, might be a product of a brainstorming meeting or um, generally a hypothesis about how things work and how the protocol is designed. It could be facts or it could be incidents uh, that happen in the IPFS network. Um, then this is the input to the design um, of the experiment methodology, which is then implemented. Um, the experiment is executed more often than not um, out in the wild. Um, you know, in the public IPFS network, we've got a few occasions where we've used simulations as well, just to see, to try to assess if our thinking is technically sound. Um, then we analyze the result, and very often, of course, as you know, in these cases, you have to revisit previous steps to make sure that, you know, you, uh, you cover the gaps, you uh, kind of go through the rough edges. Uh, generally, the methodologies that we've used so far uh, are three. Um, we're crawling the network, the IPFS network, primarily the DHT for now, but we're going to expand to others. Um, we do have a bunch of fleets of probes, um, which is basically nodes that are part of the public IPFS network, but we control them. Like we have spun them up, maybe they're running some scripts, they are doing more logging, or they're, they're keeping data according to what we want to do. And this is very, very important and like necessary, I would say, uh, in a decentralized setting. Uh, it's much more challenging to figure out you know, whatever, you, whatever it is that you want to figure out in a decentralized network where you don't basically um, control the nodes or the software that goes out there. You, it's much more difficult to, you know, log everything that is happening in the network. Um, and the third one is 
through logs. So um, there, there is infrastructure that we do not, do not operate as a team, but if we uh, get logs out of that, we can go and analyze and figure out, you know, um, what is the cache hit rate in an IPFS public gateway, for example. Um, that is important knowledge that could, you know, tell us a lot about the, the performance um, of gateways and the, the network overall. Um, we're building others, so there are, um, there are other smaller tools. These are kind of in terms of methodologies of how we do it, but there are several other tools that we, we, we have used, are using, and will be building uh, to get closer into, um, closer, like, into the performance of the network. Now, um, as updates on the measurement part, uh, as I said, there is measurement and optimization. So on the measurement part, for the last couple of quarters since Q2 of 22, um, we've done a few things. Uh, there was the Hydra dial down event, um, if you've followed that. Um, there was, in, at IPFS CAM 2022 in Lisbon, we have presented, um, we had a presentation which showed that actually the performance of Hydras, the performance boost the Hydras are giving to the network is not as huge as we expected it to be. So this was kind of going against what Hydras were, were built for um, and deployed for. Uh, so we decided to turn them off and see if things blow up um, or you know, we have unexpected behaviors. There is a whole, uh, well, not a whole talk, but I'm going to go into much more detail in a, in a talk I have later today. Uh, but basically, although Hydras are still part of the network, they're not providing the content routing functionality that they used to. So they're not storing and providing uh, provide their records. Um, another thing we did was um, not, uh, a measurement campaign on nut hole punching. Um, if you've seen this on your computer, um, then great, means you participate in the experiment, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, sorry if you haven't, uh, we, we did have lots of people participating. There is a talk later on by Max here, and um, there have been other talks about the results of this. Uh, I'm going to kind of uh, ruin it a little bit for Max to say that we've collected more than six million, um, there were more than six million hole punches attempted, and um, the remote peers were uh, we tried to connect to have been basically all over the world, as, as uh, is shown on this map here. Um, but yeah, uh, if, if you want to know more about what's the success rate and in which cases hole punching worked and which cases it didn't, then stick around. I think it's uh, after lunch at some point. Then um, there are incidents that happen in networks, as you know. Um, and in January 2023, we just came back from the Christmas break to figure out that more than 50% of IPFS DHT nodes were basically unresponsive, um, which is a huge number, a huge hit for you know, any network, like any network or system that you're running. If you, uh, if you have more than 50% of nodes being down, then basically you're out of action, which is not what happened with IPFS, which is uh, kind of speaks to the decentralized nature and peer-to-peer -peer na nature of the system that it kept working. Uh, now, again, I'm going to give, uh, uh, in another talk today, uh, I'm going to go into the details about uh, how we handled the situation and how, what performance was, was like during and after this event. Um, now, uh, another item on the provider the records intervals. Um, provider the records are those little files that leave in DHT server nodes around the IPFS network, and basically that's who you ask. That's, what, that's the file you need to find if you want to go and retrieve some content. So it, it keeps information about, it links a CID to the peer ID of the content host, right? So you need to go and find that in order to be able to connect to the provider uh, of the content. Now, we did a study uh, to see if those provider records are staying live in the network for long enough. As you understand, if those provider record files disappear from the network, then you're looking for content, but content is not findable because no one knows about it. So we wanted to see, you know, with the previous uh, settings, 
uh, content providers had to republish their records every 12 hours. So our main question was, what if all of the peers that kept the provider record for a content went offline within less than 12 hours? Content would be unreachable. Um, and what we found out is actually that content stays, con like, content stays live for much longer. The provider records stay uh, in the network, a good, a good chunk of them, as we see in this figure, is um, around 15 to 17, stay around for, uh, what is here, 30, 38 hours at least. And it goes on for, for longer, like we, uh, the experiment was extended for longer. So what this means in, in reality is that, um, again, we, we don't have a talk about this here, but there was an IPFS camp. What I want to say here is that this has been now is in production as of December of 2022. And this means that if you're providing content to the IPFS network, to the IPFS DHT, then you have 50% reduction in provider record traffic. Right, which is, is quite a bit of, of a number. We know that uh, content providers are, are struggling um, to reprovide the provider records because they are small files. But of course, you know, if, if you're hosting millions of CADs, then you have to reprovide for, for all of these. So, um, yeah, so now. All of this, one target of, um, for us since the, the, the previous IPFS thing, actually, was that we were doing lots of these measurements, but they were very difficult to find. They were, um, like, we knew where they were, but they were in different GitHub repositories, different documents. We were um, keeping things, not secret, but we didn't have a good way to go out to the community or developers or, or anyone that was interested to, um, to, to let them know of what, um, what we found. So we've put together probelab.io, which is live today in preview mode. So it's a kind of heavy work in progress, I would say. Um, perfect time to give feedback. Uh, we're just building that. And what we want this to become is basically um, a kind of point of reference for detailed results out of the experiments that we're doing. Um, this is not close to us. We're not going to be publishing there only our own experiments. So if you have something that you think is worth showing and you know is running somewhere and continuously um, producing results, we want to, um, yeah, we, we would love to know about it, um, integrating our infrastructure so that we have it automated and no manual processes so that we uh, integrate it there and everyone uh, can go and have a look. Now, what we want to have there is, you know, like as I said previously, you can find DHT lookup performance from different, several different regions, um, zoom in and out um, from uh, uh, in the graphs to find the, the performance and the, the spot that you need. But the important thing here is that um, you have the context. It's not only about plots, but there is going to be explanations about what the experiment looked like, how it was set up, set up, and you know what has been the end goal. We, there is also going to be, of course, links to the GitHub repositories where the tools and the code that we used for these leaves, um, and that kind of makes it different to a um, kind of Grafana dashboard or or other things. So um, it's going to link to a discussion forum where. You know, we want to hear from anyone that is interested to ask a question, why does this look like that? And, you know, uh, we also have questions ourselves. So um, it will be very interesting to, to have uh, open discussion about it. Um, we're also producing Nebula reports that well, started from uh, the Nebula weekly reports from the Nebula crawler. Um, now it includes a lot more results that are not only uh, an outcome of crawling the network. We've got other things in, in, uh, included in there. Um, there are lots of uh, so these you, you're going to go there. You're going to reach there from stats.ipfs.network, and there are lots of plots currently. Uh, we need to revise that and just have it show just an, um, a highlight, a weekly highlight of the health and the performance and the state of the network. But still, uh, I'm sure you're going to find very interesting, uh, very interesting plots in there. Um, so uh, we're monitoring websites. Um, 
there were, uh, we gathered most of PL run websites, but we plan to expand outside of our own websites. Uh, we're comparing the performance of our websites through loading through Kubo as compared to HTTP. Uh, uh, it's great to see that actually more websites are um, loading faster through Kubo this past week rather than through HTTP, at least in terms of time, time to first byte. Uh, it's a great improvement to previous weeks, um, and uh, we're looking to improve the SLAs and have um, availability and no errors at 99% you know, uh, of, uh, of times. Um, yeah, so this is a summary of the updates of the last couple of quarters of the team in terms of the measurements. And I'm going to quickly skim through the optimization work that we have done uh, the last couple of quarters. Uh, now, as kind of first and foremost, perhaps there is a big push towards having DHT reader privacy. Uh, there is a spec, uh, an IPIP, uh, IPIP 373, um, which kind of is also called double hash DHT. Uh, because, yeah, because of the mechanics of how it works, whether it is very accurate naming or not, I'll leave it for another session. Um, so there has been this spec um, led by Guillaume here um, that, that uh, uh, has been going on for a while, as you see, um, kind of wild conversations, lots of commits, lots of revisions, lots of comments, uh, but a, a very important development for the IPFS and LIP2P communities, right? So having reader privacy, which I should have said means kind of cli client privacy when you're requesting something from the network right now, pretty much everyone can know who you are and what you're requesting. Um, in the future, this is not like when this lands basically in production, this is not going to be um, possible anymore through a combination of different things. Um, now, writer privacy, which is when you're a content host, when you're publishing content to the network, and like now and in the future, even with this being merged, pretty much it is going to be possible to link a peer ID of yourself as the publisher with the content that you're publishing. So writer privacy has been out of scope of this work and um, yeah, it's going to be subject to future work. Of course, if you have ideas and want to work on this, you're more than welcome. It's uh, another very important component that we need to uh, put on the roadmap at some point. Um, yeah, so this doesn't have a talk in this event to go into the details. There is. As I said, the spec is super um, up-to-date and super detailed. There have been talks in IPFS CAM 2022 and IPFS Thing 2022. Uh, some of it might be a little out of date, but the general idea is there and is the same as in previous uh, talks, so you can find them on YouTube. Um, what there is going to be in this event is tomorrow in the content routing um, session, content routing track, we're going to give some updates on the migration from the current DHT to the double hashed or uh, the one that is going to provide reader privacy. Obviously, it's a breaking change, so it's not really um, you know, an easy thing. We just merge it and works. It's not going to be like that. Um, Another update is our Optimistic Provide, which again has been presented several times in previous events, uh, has been merged now, and uh, I think it's out as a, uh, with an experimental release uh, tag. So we're going to start using it. We're going, we, we already have monitoring infrastructure to see what benefits it's going to provide. Um, in a nutshell, Optimistic Provide is making faster the act of publishing content to the network. Uh, I think there, there were some results uh, presented in, um, uh, in, the, in the keynotes where um, the publish time using Kubo right now takes seconds, many times tens of seconds, which is, of course, less um, kind of uh, less critical than having the get performance you know, which is what the, the user is expecting when they're in front of their screen, but still providing um, content and having to wait for a couple of minutes is not great. So Optimistic Provide makes that uh, an order of magnitude faster, and hopefully that is going to be brought down to less than a second. Um, 
still some time to go. We need to get results. We need to uh, evaluate that and see uh, if it works. But uh, now it's merged, so we're all happy. Um, so yeah, a quick check-in from like uh, you know w while putting these slides together, um, I, I thought okay, we, we had IPFS thing 2022, and we promised some stuff at the end of that um, event in the road mapping session or whatever it was called, um, and I was very happy to figure out that um, we covered actually most of them. So this is a slide from last year, what I presented at the closing sessions as to kind of what we are committing to as a probe lab team to deliver in the next couple of quarters. Of course, in some cases, it took us a little bit longer, but uh, now uh, all these green, all the things marked in green are, uh, are basically done. There are a couple that have been left out, either intentionally or because we just didn't get to them. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I think we did pretty well. So uh, well done to everyone that contributed. Now, in terms of the, the road ahead, we have this uh, starmap.site star um, new tool that is a road mapping tool of uh, much of the PLN dress team. And that's the snapshot of where we are. Um, we've covered several things, as I said, um, the like we wanted to quantify the hydros performance contribution. We didn't only do that, but we, um, uh, managed to turn off the, the hydras and see what the performance is afterwards. Uh, we measured the nut hole punching success rate and we had all the infrastructure set up before that. Um, we're building the continuous measurement infrastructure which is basically materializing with probelab.io and eventually everything is going to be kind of under the umbrella of stats.ipfs.network. So we're making huge pro progress there. We want to integrate all of the tools. Um, yeah. I'll reiterate, if you've got tools as well that you would like to see involved, in, included there, come talk to us. Um, we, we have an ongoing effort on IPFS magic numbers, um, which is what, what it says, basically fixed hard-coded parameters into uh, the IPFS code base. And we're, uh, we're doing a big effort to see if, if those parameters are correctly set or if they need to be uh, set differently if we can make them be dynamic to avoid having hard-coded stuff in there um, and generally provide, you know, through doing this, um, this process, we want to do optimizations primarily to the DHT, um, which we found a few. Um, what, uh, one central thing that we are going to be focusing on in the coming quarters is the uh, measuring and evaluating the performance of Gossip Sub. Uh, so, Gossip Sub is the pub sub network of the lib P2P, um, uh, of lib P2P, and it's used very widely in the Filecoin network to transfer blocks and messages, but also nowadays from uh, in the Ethereum uh, 2.0. So very central protocol for uh, and with high utility um, in uh, across the board. So we want to go deeper into it and uh, figure out if it does what we expect it to do. And I hope we're not going to see this broken pipe there. You know, <laughs> everything should be in place. Um, yeah, so a quick summary to, to summarize. Uh, um, IPFS has got lots of content routing subsystems. We don't have the capacity to focus on all of them, uh, not now and not in the near future. Uh, but we, we do plan to expand and go and look into other, uh, other systems. But of course, help is welcome. So we should work together with other teams to um, get closer to you know, covering the whole spectrum. Uh, again, two places to monitor right now if you're interested in those results. Stats.ipfs.network links to weekly, weekly snapshots of the health and performance of the network. Probelab.io will go much deeper into lots of the details of the protocol design. Uh, soon, everything is going to be under one, and that is going to be stats.ipfs.network, and from there, you're going to be able to uh, link and go elsewhere. Uh, here are some pointers. I'll, I'll post the, um, my slides in the Slack channel, and uh, yeah, we've got a Notion page where we track and we keep it as you know a, a place to 
um, talk about the project, have design documents, have comments around it. Everything is, is public, of course. Uh, the roadmap that I talked about, we've got a couple of GitHub repositories, uh, one under network measurement, uh, the other under PL Probe Lab, which is our infrastructure mainly, so maybe not uh, of that much interest. And we hang around the Probe Lab channel at the IPFS Discord and Filecoin Slack. Um, I am Yanis Bot there, so if you want to reach out to me, uh, yeah, and uh, that's it. Thank you for coming to this track. Uh, we've got lots of exciting talks, but um, yeah, happy to take any questions until then. <laughs>